Welcome to the Striving for Rubies podcast. Let's walk together as we strive to be virtuous women in this dark world. I hope this episode is a blessing and an encouragement. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. Before I begin, I want to give y'all a quick update from my Instagram poll a while back. If you follow Striving for Rubies on Instagram, you might have seen that I asked if you would like for me to do a live or a video podcast with a guest. Several of you responded that you did. So the Lord placed a certain person on my heart for this special episode. I reached out to them a few days ago, and we are working on getting a date scheduled to record a video episode of the podcast. I can't wait to share who will be co-hosting with me. We'll probably announce it on a live a little before the episode is published. I am really so excited to spend some time with this guest and share with you all a topic that's close to my heart and something that I still struggle with to this day. For our topic today, let's talk about commitment, specifically in marriage. I had a friend share with me the other day about a couple who had not been married very long and they were already divorced and dating other people. My husband and I have been married nearly four years and have been together almost seven total. That's a lot of time, but we knew within that first month that the other person was it for us. We knew that eventually we would get married at some point in the future, and we did three years later to be exact. Also, I'm fully aware that there are some instances where you shouldn't or choose to not stay with your spouse, abuse, cheating, etc. I get that. Today, I'm just talking to those that are realizing that the honeymoon phase doesn't last. I've heard that between the first and second year is the worst. It wasn't really for us, but that's just what I've been told by other wives. Love is a choice. I'm sure you've heard that and maybe been bewildered by it. I know I was, but love really is a choice. I have to choose to love my husband enough to not walk away when things blow up. And he has to do the same for me. I choose to overlook when things aren't great. I choose to overlook when he's harsher with me than he needs to be. And he does the same for me. Your standards should align before marriage. Your standards, your beliefs, your doctrines, everything should pretty much match up. Now you're gonna disagree on a few things and you're gonna have different opinions and that's okay. You will disagree on certain things in the Bible because you just see it in different ways or the other person has not seen it in the way God has revealed it to the other. There shouldn't be anything that you just don't want to talk about with your spouse because you know it's going to spark an argument over the Bible. Anybody that you spend a lot of time with, you're going to have disagreements and fight. You don't have to love everything about your spouse. I know he doesn't love everything about me and I know I don't love everything about him. I don't love his bad habits. He doesn't love mine, but I do love him him and there will be times where you feel like walking away I'm sure everybody that's been married at some point has thought about walking out the door and not looking back sometimes it's a fleeting thought sometimes it's something you dwell on sometimes it's something you have to pray for the Lord to take out of your mind and your heart don't give in to that because that is of the devil that's what he wants you to do he wants your marriage to fail he wants it to be destroyed don't give in to that you'll question your marriage at some point you'll question did I marry the right person And I'm sure your spouse might as well. It's not that you don't love the other person. It's not that you really truly question whether or not you should have said I do. It's just when you're in the heat of the moment, you'll question your decisions. You'll question your marriage. You'll question, why did I do this? But I will tell you, marriage is wonderful. I was talking to my husband the other day and I told him, I said, honestly, not living with him, not being here, not having our home doesn't even compute. Us divorcing doesn't even compute in my mind. And I'm sure a lot of people are like that, that do get divorced. But in my mind, it just, it doesn't fit. It doesn't work. I can't imagine that. I don't want to imagine that. And that's how it's supposed to be. There are times where we talk to each other without even saying a word. And that's what marriage does. The bond between a husband and a wife is so special. And don't let anybody tell you that kids wreck that. They accentuate that love. Kids absolutely can make a marriage better in the right timing, if God's timing is in it. Marrying young isn't always a bad thing. And I've had a lot of people when we started, right before we got married, I was 19 and he was 20. They just completely were against it and were wondering if it would would last. 
And well, I mean, I know we got a long time to go compared to some, but we've got almost four years under our belt and we're probably happier now than we were then. And we know way more about each other now than we did then. And we're still staying together. So that says something to me. Paul says in 1 Corinthians that it's better to marry than to burn. So marrying young is actually probably a good thing for some people. I know that a lot of families encourage short engagements rather than planning a wedding for a year and all that kind of stuff. They, you just do short engagements and you get married. I think ours was like seven weeks. We only really did that because of the date that we wanted to get married was kind of right there and it worked out that way. But I would encourage that or I would encourage that for any couples and I would encourage my daughter to do the same. Sometimes in a marriage you have to swallow your pride. Sometimes you have to just sit there and not say what's on the tip of your tongue. There are so many times where I've come close to saying something that I know will completely destroy uh, my husband and it'll cause me a lot more hurt than him because I'll have to live with the fact that I said it. There will be times where you just have to keep your mouth shut. And that's hard to do, especially when you feel like you're being unjustly accused of something or you feel like you're being unfairly uh, talked down to or just anything like that. It can It's hard not to respond. We had an argument the other day and he was kind of frustrated because I would not defend myself. But I told him that if I tried to, I would end up saying something that I would regret and have to come back and really apologize for later. And I honestly, I always try to do that. I try never to say something that I have to come back and apologize for. I try to do my best. I don't always do great at it, but I do try to do that. And sometimes my anger gets the best of me. I have the worst temper. My anger gets the best of me. I spew something at him and have to come back, tail tucked between my legs and apologize. But I do try to keep my mouth shut when I know I'm that angry because there's no telling what I will say. And sometimes you have to do that and it's a learned skill and I'm still learning how to do that. But you can do this thing of marriage. If you've married young and you think you're struggling, you don't think you're gonna make it, you don't think it's gonna get any better, hang in there. It will. Ask the Lord for help. There have been, I can't tell you the amount of times where it seems like, it really, to me, it felt like our marriage was falling apart. It was not. It would just seem so big to me. And it's just been a part of our story. It's something that we had to go through to bring us closer together. And God knows that. The most important thing that I can tell you in regards to marriage actually applies to you before you get married. Don't say I do unless you mean it. Don't go get that marriage certificate unless you mean it. If you're not going to be willing to stick with it through the tough times, don't even start to begin with. If you cannot follow through, don't do it. If you get married and then have to get divorced, you disqualify yourself and your spouse from a lot of things that God could have you do. Don't say I do unless you mean it. So that's all I have for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I helped you in some shape or fashion. Again, I cannot wait to share with you who our special guest is going to be in a few weeks. Hopefully we can get that set up and that episode recorded as quick as possible. So thanks for joining and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening. Check out our Facebook page as well as our Instagram account. The links are in the description below. And if you don't already have a copy, check out my book, Striving for Rubies which talks about concerns and questions facing young ladies today. That link is also in the description below.